Now a look at how artists captured Detroit's turbulent history in the civil rights era. This week marks the 50th anniversary of major civil unrest in the Motor City, and a unique series of exhibitions are chronicling that moment. Jeffrey Brown went to Michigan to see them. A fiery red sky, people trapped in a burning city, charred remains from the 1967 Detroit riots. A painting by Yvonne Parks Ketchings in an exhibition titled Say It Loud, Art History Rebellion at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Striking images of confrontation and consequences in works by national and local artists from the 1960s on. Curator Patrina Chapman. You see the emotions of the artists, you know, describing history from their perspective. I see the politics, I see the social uh, concerns that people had in it, I see their pain, I see, um, and I feel their pain, and I think other people will feel it as well. July 1967, five days of violence, fear, and destruction in a major American city that would leave 43 dead, some 7,200 arrested, and more than 2,000 buildings destroyed. Fifty years later, some of the city's leading cultural institutions are asking questions. Was it a riot, a rebellion, even a revolution? And using art to look back and ahead. At the Detroit Historical Museum, which for the record has been a funder of the news hour and which spearheaded the citywide effort, old TVs play news footage. A replica of a National Guard tank has been turned into an audiovisual experience with oral histories told by Detroiters. I can hear, you know, activity. The Detroit Institute of Arts weighs in with an exhibition titled Art of Rebellion, Black Art of the Civil Rights Movement. With works by individuals, including leading figures such as Romare Bearden and Sam Gilliam, and so-called collectives formed in the 1960s and after by artists seeking a greater voice in society. Curator Valerie Mercer. Civil rights movement uh, and the black power movement embolden a lot of the African-American artists. Mm -hmm. Most of the mainstream art museums uh, did not provide, you know, many opportunities to African-American artists during the 60s and 70s. They were also very uncomfortable dealing with um, racial, social, and political issues. So they avoided that work. Now things are changing, you know, fortunately. Several local artists attended the opening, including Ali McGee, who told me of his encounters with the National Guard 50 years ago. I had people drive up because I was out past curfew and have a young man who was like 17 or 18 scared to death stick a bayonet you know, in your rib cage. You don't forget stuff like this. For this exhibition, McGee contributed a painting from 1968 titled Black Attack, and a later abstract work titled Apartheid. Since then, his art has gone well beyond said subjects. It just took him a while to get past what he'd witnessed. It wasn't something you could walk away from. And uh, for me, you know, it's sort of like it was a dominant subject matter for maybe 15 to 20 years. Really? Where it, you couldn't get it out of your head no, or you your can't. mind or like, your, your work. Right? Yeah, the subtleties of it kept reoccurring. I had to work that out mm. of my uh, painting experience. Yeah. Uh, it's not good to be angry. You know, it lowers the intellectual level. <laughs> you don't accomplish a lot. You're blinded by it. Rita Dickerson's painting commemorates the terror and killings of three black men at the Algiers Hotel, one of the most harrowing episodes of those July days. But she also adds the names of young black men and women killed in police shootings more recently. Dickerson grew up on Detroit's east side. Uh, we had two bakeries, we had a hardware store, two pharmacies, everything was there within one block and we could walk to every place. And during the riot, all that burned down. And 50 years later, it has not returned. Uh, Never this, back. It, yeah, it's still desolate, and it breaks my heart. Breaks yeah. my heart. In so many of Detroit's neighborhoods, on so many blocks, the abandoned homes and empty lots remain. But there are signs of life in Detroit today.
The youngest artist in the exhibition, 29-year-old Mario Moore, is literally a product of the museum. His parents met here. Mm -hmm. So it's my grandmother um, holding images of her living sons, mm -hmm. right, in the sense of protection, like, you know, these are mine, you can't have them, right? His grandmother, Helen Moore, is a longtime Detroit activist and the subject of Mario's work here. It addresses violence and how it's portrayed. You know, as soon as you turn on the news, what tends to happen is they show the mourning black mother, right? The mother that's crying about the recent death of her son, her husband, her daughter. That's the narrative. Um, that's, the, the that's the narrative that you get. And, um, you know, I feel like it was something that, that began out of a way to kind of find compassion for the other, right? Um, but once that gets used over and over and over and over again, it, it loses its value. Nobody really cares anymore. Mm -hmm. And for me, the women in my family have a very different perspective. I feel like they're very protective, they're very powerful. Different perspectives on Detroit's past and future through exhibitions around the city over the coming months. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Detroit.